This is a regular 100 mAh lithium iron phosphate battery. And this one is also a 100 mAh lithium iron phosphate battery from Watt Cycle, except it is 30% smaller and is also lighter. This one is almost 13 inches long and 6.8 inches wide. The mini is only 9 inches long and 5.4 inches wide. Let me put them together and you will see the difference. The mini is a bit narrower and almost one third shorter in this direction. They are also similar in price. At the time of testing, they are selling around $170 in Amazon. Will the mini deliver the power as advertised? And which one should you buy? Let's dive in and find out. Hi everyone, Winnie here. Welcome to my channel. Today we will test this mini battery against the regular to see if it can perform just as good as the bigger battery. I'll plug these two batteries together to the solar inputs of my Delta 2 Max power station. There are two solar inputs in this power station. With the correct cables, the power station will recognize them as solar inputs up to 500 watt each. The capacity of the Delta 2 Max is 2048 watt hour. These two batteries each have around 1280 watt hour capacity. Together they should be more than enough to fully charge the power station. The question is, which of these batteries perform better? At the end of the test, we will be able to see if the mini is just a gimmick or not. After the test, we will perform a capacity test to see how much juice they left. Before the test, I charge both batteries to 100% using a 20 amp battery charger. For this test, I will connect each battery with an XT60i cable. I will connect the regular battery to PV1 and the mini to PV2. Ok, are you ready? Which one you think will lead the charge? Let's go! 3, 2, 1! PV2 go in first! There go PV1! It's in and let's wait for a few seconds. Okay, the power station activated. Power is going in. See which one will burst out first. Here we go. We got a total of 406 watts. 211 watts from PV1 and 195 watts from PV2. The regular battery take the lead with 211 watts inputs. The mini scale back to 193 watts now. Oh, PV1 is dropped to 202 watt and now 199 watt. The mini is also down to 192 watts. Let me check the current. The retro is 15.3 amp at the positive terminal and the mini is only 14.6 amp. So the regular battery is leading for now. It should take several hours to fully charge the power station. We will check back later. Okay, we are back at the arena. The power station is 24% charged. PV1 is down a bit to 193 watts and PV2 is 188 watts. Let me check the voltage. The mini is 12.96 volt and the retro is 13.05 volt. It is steady at 193 watts and the mini is 188 watts. Again, we will check back later. Okay, it is more than 5 hours. The power station is 99% charged and it should be full in any minutes. The regular battery is fast dropping from 89 to 83 watts and the mini is still sending out 174 watts. After 5 hours and 19 minutes, the power station is 100% charged and stop accepting energy. I believe the retro is almost exhausted since it has a higher discharge rate than the mini. Average 196 watts versus 190 watt. My next step is to do a discharge test to see how much juice left in each battery. As soon as I start the discharge test for the retro, the voltage dropped immediately below 11 volt and continued to drop until it was fully discharged. That means the remaining watt hour is not much usable. The meter shows 10 watt hour capacity. For the mini, it is still maintained over 11 volt until the last few watts and the meter shows 79 watt hour capacity. After this test, 
I recharged both batteries and did a full capacity test for both batteries, and here is the result. The regular Vetra advertised 1280 watt hour, and the test result was 104 amp hour and 1302 watt hour. For the Watt Cycle Mini, it advertised 1200 watt hour, and the test result was 103 amp hour and 1293 watt hour slightly better than what they claimed. The regular battery has higher ML and watt hour, therefore two points for the retro and one point for the mini in this test. Next feature we need to consider when buying a battery is size and weight. This is where the watt cycle mini battery shine. At only 20 pounds, you can carry it with one hand at ease. It occupies less room in my Sienna minivan camper and free up more room for other gear. So in this round, mini battery wins. I give 2 points for the mini and 1 point for the regular battery. Next category is build quality. The build quality of Watt Cycle mini battery is very good. The battery comes in a well packaged box with thick protection foam around. It has included 4 M8 terminal screws, nylon handle and user manual. It has low temperature protection and waterproof ratings of IP65. It has a 4.7 user ratings in Amazon. I will not do a teardown test since there are quite a few teardown tests done by others and their reviews were quite impressive for such a budget battery. If you are interested in seeing what's inside the case, I have included those videos links below. So for the build quality, 2 points for both. My next question is can a mini battery replace your regular batteries? My next test is if it will power my H calorie diesel heater. A 12 volt diesel heater requires more than 10 amp during the startup stage. If you run your diesel heater from a 12 volt DC socket, it may not pass the surge power requirements due to the 10 amp limitations of the cigarette outlets. Some small power stations will not even start a diesel heater at all. To run a diesel heater from the battery, I use a 12 volt fridge to battery terminal cable. I just plug it in, then I use the remote to turn it on. The heater's been sitting in the garage for several weeks and it starts like a charm. In less than 10 minutes, it cranks out over 100 degree hot air. Besides running diesel heater, you can also run your 12 volt fridge directly from the battery using the fridge to battery cable. In this round, the mini battery can run just like a regular battery. If you are interested in products and tools I use in this test, I have included product links in my description as well. Ok, here's the final score for the test. The Retro regular battery has a higher capacity and better performance and earns a total of 7 points. The Watt Cycle mini battery has slightly less capacity but due to its compact size, it also earns a total of 7 points. So what's the verdict? Which one you think is best bang for your money? Which one works for you? If performance is your primary goal, the regular size battery seems like a winner. But if you are tight in space and prefer a smaller footprint, the Watt Cycle Mini is a good option. Let me know what you think. If you have any questions, please comment below. That's it for today's video. If you like this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. By the way, Watt Cycle sent me this battery for testing and review. If you are interested in getting one for yourself, check out the links below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video.